Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, or really in the middle of a campaign, in TNO, the last seeds of Europe. And right now, as you can tell, we are playing as everyone's favorite Mormon moneybags, Mr. Wallace F. Bennett, but let's begin with the presidency. Wallace F. Bennett. He, the man, has been elected as the 39th president of the U.S. in these tumultuous times. He has promised to be a force of stability and compromise, refusing to take a hard line on most issues. Instead, of course, he believes that a nuanced approach, with input from both sides of a debate, is preferable. He has also laid out plans to strengthen America's position both within the OFN and beyond, with a myriad of economic and diplomatic programs aimed at uniting the plans of remaining bastions of democracy. There are some who argue that his policies are weak and that his compromises will ultimately leave nobody happy. However, with his personable nature and his willingness for dialogue with anyone, President Bennett, Bennett might just be what America needs at this moment in history. Getting the fire extinguisher? And on the radio, let's get the radio on first, because we can. We need the people to be on our side, but they won't respond well to a plea for unity from a faceless government body to this end. President Bennett has come up with a splendid idea. He shall speak to the people directly. He's clearly popular enough, given the people voted for him. We've also requested some time slots with some national radio stations, which should the president may engage in some fireside chats, where he will present this case for a truly united America in a casual, personable manner. President Bennett will not just be the leader of the American people, but also their friend. Inheriting a war, though. <clears throat> A painful realization strikes the newly elected commander-in-chief as he takes office. The war in South Africa, uh, South Africa rages, still rages on, and it proved to be one of the most first issues that requires presidential action. It's evident that the longer the war rages, the less favor the people, populace, and military will bestow upon it. Hence, it is necessary to develop new measures to take control of the war in South Africa, drive out the radical Boers and Germans, and secure an American victory in South, a South Africa. The president will save us, and if you want to put that one, please go ahead to a prosperous future and an appointment of Edmund Muskie. If one were to think of an ideal candidate or for Secretary of State, Edmund Muskie, he wouldn't be it. He's reserved, blunt, and relatively inexperienced in foreign affairs, but with all that said, Muskie has a lot going for him. A Treasury, Treasury Secretary Robertson is a reward to President Bennett's conservative backers. Secretary of State Muskie is an olive branch for, to the liberal wing of the Republican Democrats, as Maine's governor, and subsequently senator. He's championed civil rights and environmental protections, bringing Maine fully into the 20th century. Depending on who you ask, he's either the right man to represent America on the world stage, or a lily liver provincial who is better off sending pork back to Portland, as one editor rightly put it. Sending Muskie against the Germans would be like sending a three-toed sloth out to see turf from a wolverine. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So, honestly, with Bennett, I'm, I have no idea which way I really want to go. Oh, we have an inherited disaster. Program. Uh, expanded role. Not bad. And of course, we do have the 1964 military policy outlook, which we can do later on. Now, we can either go with token reforms and lower relationship with the Church of Latter-day Saints and raise the relationship with the Republicans and make the draft more liberal or don't rock the boat. So, do we want civil rights or not? Because right now, with the election, we did pretty darn well with the Republicans. 46. There are 22 Democrats, which is not great. There's quite a bit of far right here and some center, so we'll have to figure that out. But also, like, South Africa, this whole thing is, I mean, it's, it's basically over at this point. It's, it's so dreadful sometimes just trying to fight through all this muck and grime of the Africa Shield. Appointment of Absalom Robertson. Absalom Absalom reads more than one witty editorial headline with the nomination of Absalom Robertson to the post of Treasury Secretary. The reference to Dixie literature is adroit, but Robertson himself is a serious man. A son of Virginia's powerful bird organization, Robertson firmly believes in the camp of conservative Southern Democrats, adamantly opposed to any sort of integration in his appointment. Assuredly a sop to President Bennett's supporters in Congress, but also as many in the opposition worried. The Treasury Department has a great deal of power over taxes and audits. What might it do with those who come out against Bennett's agenda? Especially with an art conservative in the driver's seat. And then there's the new production company that his son, Pat, is setting up. Pat Robertson. Oh, sounds kind of familiar. Deo Vendice. Hmm. Cool. And, of course, it is only 1965, which means we need to expand everything that we have. Oh, they offer ceasefire. Nope. Come on, get in there. Come on. I hate the South African War sometimes so much. It's so boring. And, I don't know, I just... I wish there was more we could do with it. So, I, I, half of me is just, like, thinking... You know what we're gonna do? I'll just use console commands to get rid of these guys, maybe. We'll see what happens. Cause like Oh, appointment Robert McNamara. Oh. Uh, it would be unfair to call Robert McNam Robert Strange McNamara a man of numbers and numbers alone, sure. He's made his name as Harvard's youngest professor, helped forward save forward from its post war fiscal chaos, but McNamara has a fair share of ideology in contrast to those who call for the raising of Japan or German Africa, he wants a Pentagon to take a more measured approach. Fewer first strike capabilities and more deterrence. Fewer rigid doctrines and more counterinsurgency. To supporters in Congress, McNamara is a man who will shake things up, rationalizing the business of war in a new era of conflict. The question remains, though, will he truly change the Pentagon or will his efforts get bogged down in the old system? Let's hope he isn't derelict in his duty. Nice. I get more infantry attack and defense and gets more population. That's nice. Uh, Maxwell, did you have any upgrades? No. Kind of disappointing, but whatever. Yeah, we couldn't send a whole bunch of soldiers over here, but on the radio. What do we have over here? Oh, boy. 
Oh boy, political landscape. Uh, American society is disunited, which is not great, but whatever. Uh, Supreme Court, it's fairly conservative, but not by too much. Um, let's see what else do we have. So, don't rock the boat. Maintaining your relationships with the different people of America is no small task. Bennett, a campaign under promise to not rock the boat and dare no sales be caught on the whim. The lower a relationship with, with Group B, the more likely those groups will start, start to defect to the NPP. The higher relationship all will be the easier it will be to swing voters to our side. Player cards just carefully Bennett for every concession we make to one will bother the other. Every year, our relationship to each voter base will be put to the test, but also following major decisions. American businesses is very high of us, as well as uh, which will affect our GDP growth. Foreign businesses is middling, which affect oath and unity and interest rates. The Mormons uh, is very high and affect our strength in Mormon majority areas, influence our ability effectively campaign and have various other unexpected results. Catholic opinion is middling as well and it affect our standing in non-Mormon religious strongholds, which is weird. What, Catholic? Like, okay, if you're going to talk about Catholic, I mean, he's Mormon and all, but like, why not, like, actual mainstream Protestant then? Like, hmm. Next crowd opinion of us is high, affect our standing in the South, and the Republican standing of us is very, very high, so ease of fears of American businesses, related relationship. Appeal to the Mormons. We can raise to the church and state Catholic peoples. Concession to Dixie. Courage except adopting refugees. I don't know about that. Invite the Pope to D.C. Hmm. Build the Kennedy Memorial. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. Probably do that. Um, denounce civil rights protests. South African War, of course. When do we get to send an extra volunteer over? Because I've, I've gone through all these, and I don't see it. I've done it before. I don't see anything here, though. And at this point, there's no point doing that. So just close that out. Domestic situation. Implement the draft. Make token withdrawals. Yeah, I'm not seeing very much here, so. Um, honestly, I don't know which way I really want us to go, so we're just gonna hang out for now. Ooh, and actually, we should have some debt to cut down. I apologize. Usually, like with this guy, I'm gonna just cut down a lot of the debt. So we'll see what happens. As we're desperately trying to get rid of the stupid African, stupid African war, you know. On the radio and get the fire extinguisher. In this current age, the name United States of America is just almost a joke. With Americans practically at each other's throats over a myriad of issues. Now these issues of civil rights, we can hardly present a unified front to the fascist powers. If we're to restore peace to America, we have to put the fires out. Let's appeal for calm, bring any radicals in the government to heal, and try to calm down the incendiary mood that has been plaguing America for the past couple of years. So actually, we probably want to increase foreign business, but I don't want to spend political power too much yet. Like, I know this one that we're doing literally right now helps us get more political power, but. Also, we're done with the CIA stuff, so whatever. Also, Germany did, did say they're going to get involved here in Africa, so we'll see what happens. They got their tanks there. That sucks. That sucks. Oh, hey, we got them. Goodbye. Um, if we move fast enough, we probably won't have to deal with them too much. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to deal with them too much, man. Yeah, close that one up for now. Yeah, no oh, Mormons. Ooh, things are going down a little bit now already. Holy crap, long day. President Wallace have Bennett sat behind his desk, soaring through the constant stream of political reports, economic graphs, and social statements by experts and activists alike. Despite the difficult winter, his administration has managed to put together quite a substantial list of successes, but he could not. <clears throat> How to shiver as the door opened. And came Absalom Robertson, armed with an intimidating set of reports and an armory of pens and pe uh, glittering from his breast pocket. Well, Secretary Robertson come in, how's it been? Been open. You know how it's been, wet, cold, windy, some hellishly angry, angry governors from the Rust Belt barking about federal funding. Robertson replied before taking a seat across from the president. With, well, with regards to the federal grants for Wisconsin, I believe that Bennett began before having a heavy, heavy, before heaving, a uh, heaving set of wet coughs derailed the conversation. Robertson looked nervously at President Bennett. As he rocked in his chair, the president's face darkened as a violent uh, coughing spell continued. After what seemed like an eternity, President Bennett managed to regain his composure, even as the world spun, spun gently. His mind raced. He had never dealt with such a coughing fit before. Robertson, with, for his part, looked worryingly at the president, having received no answer to his question. I'm quite fine, for Secretary Absalom. Where are we? Where were we? Where are we? Where were we? You know, I can't tell what we're, what we're doing anymore in life. Get some more expertise. That's fine for now. Maintain the status quo. Now that we're in power, we must firmly put our foot down against those who would seek radical change in the system. The American government has been a bedrock of stability since 1776. Any necessary change has been made perfectly well, with due process and gradualism. The radicals who believe that a system needs to be turned upside down only need to look at Germany and Japan and see the inevitable outcome of such a sudden change. We'll keep the government going as it always has and ensure that the moderates of the RDs always hold the balance of power. Right, we'll see about that. We haven't gone radical, Bennett, but maybe we will in this campaign. I don't know. We'll see what happens. The days grow harder. President Bennett, rather than committing himself to his usual diligence, decided to take a rare break and said to look out the window. In a rare moment of appreciation, if only I could undo the chilly fall. It felt abnormally cold, colder than any winter he'd known. Ever since the coffee fit experience during that meeting with Secretary uh, Robertson, Ben had anxiously wrestled with the question of his age and health, no matter the leader of the free world. 
No small matter, at least. President Bennett, of course, walked down the halls, thinking that talking to the loyal staff might clear his mind. But he could not skip that fact that were he to expire in office, his staff needed to know what to do. America was constantly changing and shifting country, and strong leadership would be needed to keep it grounded in safety, security, and just sanity. After a long walk, which had frankly failed to clear the president's mind, the sight of Francis Bennett, first lady of uh, the U.S., was a wonderful welcome sight. Well, it's really excited to see you out of the office. How are you doing, Francis? Bennett said, offering her husband a kiss. Well, I wanted to. Well, uh, the president said before a thunder set of coughs racked his pale frame, leaving him in his wife's embrace as she called for the staff, with the VP4 rushing from his office to support the faltering president. For Francis, gotta help me. I'm fine. I'm fine. You have to help me. I'm, he's fine. What do you mean? He's fine. Get down here just in case we get, like, encircled and stuff, so. The Republican support is very... Why is it always going down so fast already? Do we really have to spend this much political power this quickly? I do not want to spend that much this quickly already. The Media Meteor. And the Lord shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. President Bennett, despite his physical hardships, clasped his wife's hand tightly as he prayed. Despite his pious devotion, President Bennett found his mind wandering from the prayer with persistent worries regarding the outside world. And here he was, laying in bed, as sick as a dog, praying to God to grant him strength. VP Ford walked in after attending Bennett's morning meetings. It's good to hear that you're doing well and all right, Mr. President, he said respectfully. Ben raised his head as best he could to hear what his vice president had to say about the world beyond the White House. So, what's it like out there? Well, it ain't the prettiest sight, and about your condition, some of the staff gave out too much information before we could stop them, but none of them de delved into the specifics of the pneumonia, but Ford laid the morning's paper on Bennett's chest. The president fumblingly gripped the newspaper before it brought in, looking at the headlines. President Bennett, bedridden. It was crushing, humiliating. Bennett had sacrificed much for the betterment of the country, and now some nasty pneumonia was trying to do him in. By God, we'll get through this in a plea from the English. Our dearest friends from across the Atlantic, so began the most groveling and pitiful request the U.S. has ever received from the English. They clearly were in desperate need of American backing, which normally would be accepted without a moment's hesitation, however. While well, the English government was proposing required a lot more assessment to be made. They were planning on invading the Cornwall garrison, which had ravaged the country since invasion in 43. It was a dangerous move, to say the least. With such a dangerous man control of the Reich's military, a German response could all be inevitable. Yet the invasion would be such an unexpected move for the Germans that it made for England of their influence and paved the way for the U.S. to step in. Thus, a huge blow would be delivered to the Germans, and an incredibly strategic ally would be gained in the process. Ultimately, the decision had to be made by the President, who thought to themselves for no longer than a moment before making up their minds, they have lost their minds. Manono. Um, we've set up the South Africans to do really, really well here, as you can tell, but... I don't want to do this. Foreign businesses? Appeal to Mormons? Here, do that. We'll try that one. Church is fine. Catholic opinion is... Eh. Eh. Dixiecrat is middling, which is fine. Um, lower relations with Republicans? I don't want to do that. I don't want to rock the boat too hard, but we'll see. The fire extinguisher. Maintain the status quo. Pretty much, man. And Bennett we trust. The days we started to blend together for President Bennett. It had been a good few days since the speech on national TV, announcing his recovering health to the country and assuring them that he'd take care of them as they faced a difficult winter together. Nevertheless, began between the coughing, breathlessness, and the fatigue, pneumonia was a special kind of heck for Bennett. VP Ford entered unannounced, startling Bennett. Well, I was knocking at the door for a minute or two there. You didn't hear me? Bennett blinked, confused, before nodding once again apologetically and motioning for Ford to continue. The Australian diplomats are coming to iron out some of the details within the open's military arrangements. Ford trailed off upon seeing the president's attention wavering. Wallace? Uh, yeah, the Australians. Can, can, can we postpone the meeting and arrange dinner with them next week? That'll make them happy, Bennett responded. Uh, Ford's eyes narrowed. The Australians have been asking for a meeting for months. Just do it. I already have enough on my plate, Bennett barked, leading Ford to nod slightly before he left the room. Can I get, can I get, can I get any peace? Can I, can, can I please get some peace? Being quiet. Can you guys actually win there and get some tanks? Yeah, I guess so. My goal is always to encircle on respiration racism. The crowds that have formed outside of the White House watched with D.C. in a buzz over the President's speech over the troubling crisis of modern America. No one could precisely pin down what the President was going to say or how he was going to address the uncertainty of the future. But all agreed that President Bennett did not look healthy in the slightest. Good morning, Bennett said, before briefly pulling up away from the microphone to avoid his coughing spurts echoing nationwide. I'm a God-fearing man. I was raised under his gospel, and now I minister as President in service to him. I must say we're in a chaotic state of this country's history. Bennett coughed messily once before proceeding. It is the duty of the President of the U.S. that the laws be, be faithfully executed in this. It is my duty to exercise my powers in the Legislating and Civil Rights Act, however. I intend to <coughs> make sure that we Americans remember our traditions and culture. The audience, both on the lawn and in the living rooms, whispered as this darn pneumonia is caught by, the, by, caught by the microphone before Bennett made a quick close of the speech. Afterwards, the nation is abuzz, not with perfect criticism or support for the President, but with worry, with an entirely new kind of media circus emerging to speculate on the President's declining health. I'm fine, for the love of God, he will protect me. Political necessity. Oh. So, we'll begin the process of drafting new civil rights legislation. The Republicans and Democrats will be inclined to listen to him if they like him. 
Fiscal reform. Or financial reform. I want to do that a lot. Stem the tide. This will raise support for the Silver Act with the far right. And raise support with the Republicans. Raise support for the Silver Act with the center. By power and effort. Jack up the prices. Um, I really don't know which way I want to go. I kind of want to go with token reform. Because right now, what we have... Uh, is... Very light domestic discontent, whatever. So high. We already have token civil rights legislation, so... Great push, the voices of the people. I mean, Dick's Crest already don't like us, so... Uh, it won't really matter. Take the floor, fine line, empower the Republicans. <sighs> Liberal democracy. Empower the Democrats. Honestly, that seems like a better way to go, because we have... We're technically conservatives, and LBJ is a liberal Republican. So, through guidance, stability. The Democrats win a huge coup. Through change, progress. The Republicans win a huge coup. Democrats flee to the far right. This is disabled the Dictocrat from having to be dealing to dealt with. Voting Rights Act. I don't know. I think I'll play Ben at least. Okay, so at the time of this recording, Toolbox Theory is not out. So, I want to see what we can do with this. I think we'll probably try to do a token reform. And whenever we're. Toolbox series does come out, then we'll come back and do this a whole bunch. So, political necessity. Like it or not, we need to deal with the civil rights issue. It was President Nixon's lack of initiative and carrying out need to reform that led to the current crisis, and while the issue stands, it's unlikely that America will be able to focus on anything else. Unlike some, however, we're not going to be so keen to just kick the segregationists to the curb after all. Now and then, their sale will just transfer the wrath of the debate from one side to the other. We need a solution that pleases both sides, or at least one that doesn't upset either side too much. But time to come together. President Bennett. Waited with the front hall of the White House, flanked by the First Lady Frances Bennett on the right and BP General Gerald Ford on his left. Bennett, between coughs, tried to lighten the mood, saying, I'll be f It'll be fun, don't worry, either of you. Jeez, relax. It's a few weeks prior, the President's been seen in a deteriorating state. More tissues occupied his desk space and reports, continuing to build up on the former's favor. Wallace, dear friend, listen to yourself. Francis' words, words dis dissipated as tears ran down her face. You are worried about this pneumonia, it's going to kill you if you don't slow things down. In the present, the trio mounted the stand for a second surprise speech for the president. I want to say something simple, something I want to make loud and clear. I am sorry. I'm embarrassing you both, myself and the administration, my civil rights speech with all my ill health. This bad pneumonia has affected my work and well-being, but I shall go henceforth in acknowledging my limitations. To make sure I can perform my duties as well as I can, the crowd remained shocked, staring at the president's public acknowledgement, before a sense of care and concern for the president welled up. Not for me, but for them, but bipartisan broadcasts. President Bennett sat behind his desk, determined to get through the workday, no matter the chills shooting down the president's back or his coughing fits. Bennett found the idea of stepping aside an absolutely disgusting breach of duty. No matter how many pills he took, no matter how many breaks he needed, no matter how many times the amount of nurses he had stationed inside the White House, he would not back down. Finding another cough, he picked up the letter on his desk, President Bennett. I hope that this letter finds you well. It is with great understanding towards both your health as well as suffering of my inner city constituents that I can say that this past winter was terribly difficult for the country. Everywhere you looked, men, women, and children fell ill and suffered, unable to access proper care. To the extent even when our leadership was struck ill, nevertheless, it's a common humanity that binds all of us, from the God-fearing Midwestern farmer to the worker of the Great Lakes. And it's with this common humanity that I pray for your swift recovery and that your administration may quickly resume its effectiveness. Mr. President, I know that I will move on the NPP to help you without malice. Godspeed, Michael Harrington. Kind of found is kind of clean. He doesn't care, probably wants me to step down. Probably does, but that doesn't mean that Jack Squat did a thing to us. We got a lot of build. Uh, cut and keep spending. That's fine. Because we're going to need that political power no matter what we do. A slippery slope, though. We're going to need a lot of political power. <laughs> and we're going to need another... Uh, a helicopter. But President Bennett knew that was nearly time to close up. Work some, rest some, choke down some food, and continue working. The work of government was too important to be stopped here by mere pneumonia. Mechanically, President Bennett opened the last letter on his desk. President Bennett, the community by which the U.S. was founded upon finds solace in the unity and the grace that binds them. Men work in arm in arm from the forests of the east to the marshlands of the south to the dusty trails of the west. Men have torn themselves over matters far less important, and yet in the trying times life has presented you with, you still find grace uh, in your words. I know we have very different notions about religion and God, but your humility speaks for itself. Despite the nation's recent difficulties, Americans remain hopeful for a more prosperous future, but the work is never done, and in that regard, the American worker still suffers as you do today. I hope that the unions may be granted the freedom to help every American during these trying times. Best wishes, Michael Harrington. He's got some nerve, man. He's got some nerve. Party unity. Republicans will like us for a while. But, um, we'll do sep separation of church and state. I don't know about that, man. That sounds like a good thing to have sometimes. An integration of church and state. Anyways. Maintaining status quo and political necessity would be nice, nice, nice. Yeah, they have got a lot more divisions than what they had before I started recording this. 
I don't know how, though. Come on, South Africa. Harrington harassing the president. Recent reports also have been was shown to have publicly struck down by the recent outbreak of Nabonid plague plaguing the U.S., with the president refusing to back down from Zuzi's as chief, uh, chief executive of the U.S. Some have come to support the president's diligence, including Michael Harrington, who has sent several letters calling for the administration to revisit union policies. The administration insisted that President Bennett remains healthy enough to continue serving as president, despite his illness, and has denounced Harrington's overtures. It's sick. It's predatory. It's disgusting, remarked Donald Reagan. President Bennett's chief of staff. Meanwhile, supporters of Harrington are crowded on shame regarding the chief spokesperson's seeming disregard for the president's illness. This has become a, such a point of contention with several chapters of the center branch of the MPP, with one leader commenting that Harrington's action in making the health of the president a political issue was a misstep which affects our entire party. A misstep along Harrington's path? Oh well. Look at that. Nice. Good, good, good. Kamina? Yes, please. Uh, middling foreign businesses, Catholic opinions is middling, uh, Dick's crowd opinion. Um, well, we're gonna try to t pass token civil rights, so we don't really give a crap. A greater down upon a brighter day. The sun's rays shone into the president's bedroom, warming his face, turning to look at his beautiful, beautiful wife, apparently. President Bennett took a long minute to close his eyes, breathe in, and let the beautiful air of a warmer day out of his lungs. For the first time in as long as Wallace have Bennett could remember, he breathed and enjoyed the tranquility of life without seizing in his chest, a coughing fit, or the worry of not being able to draw another breath. President Wallace F. Bennett did not discount the importance of the passing he has been given. Um... <clears throat> Awaking his wife, they made his way to the dining room of the White House together without a nurse to prop up the president. They enjoyed a plentiful breakfast together, saving the warm honey glazed biscuits, the servings of hashed potatoes, Ooh. and the fresh bacon sent up from the White House uh, kitchen. That sounds awesome. Now, after being out of commission for so long, Bennett knew that he was over long overdue in the reminding America of the love he held for the country and his countrymen. He spent the rest of his morning on the phone with Vice President Gerald Ford, arranging an announcement speech that Wallace F. Bennett was back and with a newfound health and care for his countrymen. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Um, this kind of reminds me a lot of, uh, who, uh, was it, President William Harrison in the 19th century, I think? That basically died because of pneumonia, I think? Basically wouldn't become president, so. We're going to go with token reform. We'll see what we can do here. After some deliberation, President Ben has decided the best course of action is a modest program of reform. With some new laws to protect the worst injustices against the African-American population, we can prove them to, to them that we are listening. We might have to kick, take off some segregationists a little bit to achieve this, but as long as we toe the line and water down some of the more radical proposals, we can settle this issue without making too many people unhappy. The church, Mormons, and Dixocrats won't like us, but the Republicans will like us. Make the job more liberal. I don't know. I wanted to go that way just because we have so many Republicans here already. So... So we're gonna piss those guys off. I'm gonna piss off. What was it the Mormons? Oh, well, that that'd be all right. Um, Central Intelligence Agency. There you go. Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Oh. And don't worry, that was just my door. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And what's the next focus after this one? Political necessity. Yeah, token reforms. Could fire protections. Um. Uh, While well, taking this focus, our relationship with the Dixie Cross will decay quicker after completion of, or return to normal. Huh. Crack down and continue resistance. We might do that one. We'll see what happens. Oh, do we get a circle? Oh, we did not get a circle. Right. We're still moving around. It's fine. Cut down that debt. It's not much, but hey, it's all something, something, something. Token reform, and then we'll go and do division. For all that speaks. Some speak of America as hopelessly divided. I know that we're stronger than ever. The other nations wage endless wars of endless annihilation. We have the industry, the knowledge, and the moral strength to make the world safer for liberty. Unity is a word on the President Wallace F. Bennett's lips as he speaks before a vast crowd. The sky is gray, having let loose an anemic inches worth of snow over D Washington, D.C. last night. It looks lovely on the ground, perhaps, but everyone can see the grimy slush on the ground. For all of Bennett's rhetoric, protesters rallied for segregation in Birmingham and for the liberation of Little Rock. Against all of this, what can new monetary policy and sensible civil rights efforts do? The early 60s brought disenchantment on unprecedented, unprecedented levels. Bennett might want to turn the page, but the U.S. of A. might not be finished with the story. I, Wallace Foster Bennett, do solemnly swear. I'll crack down and continue resistance. Let's sit down and clear the streets. Protests and riots are still going on across the country, and if we are to ensure a civilized debate around, we must put an end on these constant battlegrounds. We'll increase police funding and send them out to round up the worst troublemakers and order the rest of the people home. To avoid accusations of political favoritism, we'll crack down on the violence on both sides. If either side wants to be listened to, they need to start acting like adults. Now, the reason why I don't want to go this way is just because it'll lower our relationship with the Republicans, and we have so many Republicans here. It's ridiculous. Way too many Republicans compared to Dix uh, Democrats. So, yeah, and... 
uh, keep it vague. This will dangerously lower our relationship with the Republicans. And like I said earlier, we have so many Republicans. 46 is a bit much. The call from higher, up higher. On certain days, President Bennett would seclude himself in the Oval Office in the mornings with his advisors, planning out his next actions. So the quiet work of politics was one of the best done without distractions. So knock at the door. Followed by an aide peeking into the room. He looked at the, his feet for a second, then pressed on. You've got a call, Mr. President, from Salt Lake City. Uh, Mr. Thomas Monson? I'll take it in here, thank you. Bennett had closed the distance in his seconds before closing the door firmly in Elliot's face. A call from a senior leader in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints most definitely did not need to be advertised by an incautious aide. The phone rang and President Bennett took a deep breath before picking up. Mr. Monson, what's the occasion for calling today? Brother Bennett, I want to talk to you about the civil rights speech you gave the other day. Monson wasted no time getting to the point. Don't you think we should be given dialogue time to work? Rushing through early earthly solutions won't do much to fill the spiritual void between the races. Bennett took a deep breath. Of course the Church had an opinion, but he had his own. The country needs civil rights to come up, come from the top. We can't rush reconciliation. Um. Uh, we'll do that one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know. See what happens. Also, I did send um another division over here to help us out. So, uh, 88 is not bad. Midland for Catholic opinion. Oh my gosh, it's going even lower now. High and high. That's good. Dick's credit opinion of us is low, so no one gives a crap. Republicans. Um, uh, doing civil rights protest. Nah. Lower relationship with the Dixocrats, Catholic America. Uh, we'll see what happens. If we can do that and go here, that'd be great. You should be able to. So, so we did send this other division over to see what we can do about this, but, you know, you never know. For the law, equal before the law, equal before God. President Bennett, leaning back in his chair, has responded to Mr. Thompson Monson's request to hold back on the civil rights question. Mr. Monson, I have a duty to look after all the people in the United States, and it's clear to me that we can't hold one group of people above another in the eyes of the law. Not anymore. The RDs won't stand for it, and the people won't stand for it. Bennett looked through the Oval Office windows out onto the South Lawn. Beyond it was Ellipse, the park that had played host to protests and counter protests fighting over the question of civil rights in full view of the White House, a nation tearing itself apart over the Nixon years and the long decade of civil rights turmoil. He'd been elected to bring the nation together and to heal, and as Lincoln had said, the nation would not survive half slave and half free. Even in the century following the Civil War, America was still a nation at war within its soul. Mr. Monson Bennett said, Alongside my duties to uphold the Constitution, I am a religious man. And if I am to practice the teachings of Christ, to hold true to the maxim that we are all made equal in God's image, then I cannot bear witness to suffering based solely on the color of a man's skin. Time for civil rights has come? Well, we'll see. Not a Monson's watch. A silence following Bennett's words. The elders of the Mormon Church do not speak lightly or without consideration. I'm disappointed, Brother Bennett. Th uh, Thomas Monson did not attempt to hide his displeasure. Ah, I respect that you're a godly man, but I thought you were more inclined to listen to the elders of the church on matters of moral imp import. Bennett remained silent. The dignitary of the office of the president demanded no less. The church cannot accept that radical changes are on the right path forward, Monson sighed. The con congregation won't accept it, and I can imagine that I would not be the only one disappointed that if that this is the path your administration takes. Monson has his opinions. Uh, let's see. Civil rights protests. Let's see. Uh... Mormons. Oh, oh, that was a big old hit. Mm, appeal to Mormons. Might as well. Oh, look. And it's a comment. Nice. There you go. See what you can do. And it means that we get attacked. If you need a retreat, that's fine. Get back in. There you go. Also, we had some planes around here, too. Let's see you guys do all that. There you go. Good luck. Plenty of planes. Yeah, that's why I don't ever like using militia. They're pretty easy to beat up, so. Uh, 70s, now I'll get some of that because technology won't matter eventually. And Indonesian War, god dang it. I can't do all these war at once. I hate this war so much, like I said earlier. It's just, it's not fun. 16 support us. It just takes so god awfully long to kill them completely off. Indonesia alive. What could be better than that? Take the one of the supply areas here. That'd be good. 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 Actually, go right here. Now you got him. That's good. Auto saving. That's fine. Now we'll talk about Indonesia as well because we're going to need to. Uh, appeal to Mormons for now. Going to require a lot of PP. And uh, oh, uh, the burning jungle. Indonesia's a flame. What's the situation? This one's more important to get to. Victory for the DC, alright. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Very low, very high, middling, middling, uh, pretty high, Catholic opinion. Uh, how many Catholics live in the United States? Can we just ignore them? <laughs> no, you, you go here. 
Dick's crack of flames. Today, the President Bennett uh, moved towards civil rights have been unpopular as quiet. The understatement exemplified perfectly by the tantrums of the Dixocrats. The general old white and southern Democrat caucus has existed in some form uh, before the Civil War, though now uh, most vote MPP. They are notoriously stubborn, and now that particular characteristic is shining through. Several Dixocrat senators have threatened to filibuster the upcoming bill pushed by the Bennett administration, including Strom Thurmond, the MPP senator from South Carolina, generally considered to be the current head of the Southern Caucus. One thing is certain, as long as the Dixocrats are up in arms, the Civil Rights Bell is no chance. Another temper tantrum? Typical. Indonesia Flame. Our analysis predictions regarding the Far East Indies have proven frightfully accurate. Sukarno's attempt at using martial law to solve the crisis with the PKI has been a dismal failure years after, after years of frustration with the despotic administration. Labor Democrat Mohamed Hatta has risen up against Sukarno under the banner of freeing Indonesia. While Sukarno may stress that everything is under control, Hatta is moving swiftly to seize the country, having already taken up large swaths of Aka, Borneo, and Papua. This could be a critical opportunity for the United States to gain a new ally against the Japanese domination of Asia as long as we act quickly. The jungle burns and pick up the red phone. Given that both of us are nuclear powers, it stands the reason that we must tread carefully when interfering with the co-prosperity sphere. While Japan seems to be controlled by a level-headed man, we still must be careful to toe the fine line between isolationism and being mavericks. We'll place a call to the Japanese on the red t telephone. We'll show them that we have no interest in sending Japanese boys home with American bullets in them, yet our commitment to democratic movements around the world brings upon us a moral obligation to support those who fight for freedom in Indonesia, reminding them of Indonesia's technical independence and sovereignty. We'll caution them against launching an intervention into the East Indies and remind them that threatening the freedom of a sovereign people may have dire consequences. Uh, let's see, the MPP... Oh, oh, the War of Words. Oh, we'll see what happens then. Raise domestic support for the war? Yeah, we'll see what happens after this one then. Conversations from the street Indonesia calls. Uh, I think I've already read this one before, so if you don't read this one, please go ahead. Dixocrats cool off. After several weeks of what ostensibly a tantrum tantrum for the Dixocrats, things have finally cooled off. A calm down enough that the civil rights bell can move forward. Strom Thurmond uh, now claims that the Southern Democrat Caucus will attempt to kill the bill through a vote, not through a filibuster. This comes as welcome news to the largely RD Congress, who are confident that any attempt that the anti civil rights movement makes to stop the bill from passing will fail. President Bennett gave a short comment today in a press conference, saying that he was happy that the democratic process is now being respected. Democracy prevails finally? Well, who likes democracy? More divisions go bye bye? That's exactly what we like to see. Actually, we've done really, really well. Like, having these guys flood through here is a pretty good idea. Alright, so middle in, middle in, middle in, middle in, and very high, very high. Like that Catholic opinion. Uh, build the good entity. They hate us anyways, just do this one. Nice. Operational success. Uruguay loves us. Oh, you bet they love us. No real point to keep doing it for now. Intelligence analysis is fine, but other than that, eh. And now they've been cut off. Oh, they had helicopters of their own. Well, they did. Can I send volunteers to them over there? No, it's a little ahead of time. 65. Uh, maybe that's something like that. Can I send you guys some boys? Oh, God. Yeah, I might. I will probably go off. Yeah, we can. I'm probably going to go off screen and just like help these guys out. like Because I hate this South African War. It just lasts too long. I know I could peace out earlier with them, but no. I'm sorry. It's either go all the way in or don't go all the way in. So, there is no middle ground with me. Yeah, I go from one extreme to the other. That's that's who, just who I am. Um, 80, huh? That and... Well, that's all we got. Okay. See what happens. see what we got here. Helicopters would be nicer, but we don't have any since we're already out, but whatever. Um, okay, so a war of words. What do we want? Can we do either one? Yeah, we can do either one. Daily command power, daily political power for them. Not bad. Secure the supply lines. Uh, lessons of South Africa. It's not bad. That could really help them out for more defense. Lower domestic war support. Uh, United we stand. Raise domestic support for the war. Free stockyard output. Four base Darwin. Support for the war. It's not bad. Send in advisors. I don't want to lower our domestic support, but we do get more advisors, so we'll work the back channels. Open arm of the free Indonesia may be a bridge too far for the moment. Nonetheless, equipment has often found its way into the stockpiles of rebel movements throughout the world. If American equipment were to find itself in Hada's hands, well, that would surely just be a coincidence. We shall open back channels of communication and transport between Hada and the U.S. We shall ensure Hada gets his hands on some premium American equipment. Hopefully, this will help to turn the tide of the war in Indonesia. 
Secure supply lines. Every army travels on his stomach, and how does is no different. His men need food. His trucks need fuel, and his guns need cartridges. America will gladly provide all these. We'll use our positions in the Pacific, particularly Australia, to secure supply lines of the liberated zones of Indonesia. With their help, Hata's men will want for nothing. We can all hope Japan is less generous to Sakarno than we are to Hata. Alright, so what do we got here? Oh, yes. Send more military advisors, lower domestic support for the war. I'm kind of okay with that, honestly. Domestic situation here, huh? Okay, yeah, uh, RD support is middling. Eh. Anything else here we really care about? 90, uh, 82, 25, no one cares. Catholic support. I haven't got that much more support yet. So we got what? 23 uh, guys here? That's not much. Come on, game. Come on. I want to click on something. Please, please go. Uh, you get some one more. All right. Um, is there another marine in? Cool. How's South Africa looking? Doing okay here? Fine. Kill them all off. Nice. I'm going there too. There you go. Nice. Here, just to kill them all off. That's all we want to do. Cut them off from any sort of supply. That'd be great, great, great. And they're done. And go in there too. And they're done. Okay. Nice. Uh, this is looking very precarious right now, if I do say so myself. Get under the field marshal's command. Uh, no. I know we could just peace out, but no. I'm sorry, but no. I'm not sorry, no. I ain't sorry at all. NPA, very nice. A Kaz also arrived here too. There you go. Nice you win. Nice. Secure supply lines, very good, very good. You should be able to win pretty easily, not gonna lie. The battle for early should begin soon too. Oh, actually go right there. You're gonna need some support. Secure supply lines, lessons to South Africa. Conflict in South Africa taught us much about asymmetrical warfare in the late 20th century. Our troops are battle hard, and our attaches may have insights to offer hot to freedom fighters. We'll send the U.S. Army Rangers to teach the free Indonesian entrenchment tactics to improve their defensive capabilities against the Karna. We'll also teach them logistical techniques that will improve their mobility and ability to stay organized while on the march. Nice. Ah, Baratia. Good job, Baratia. Good job. Well, at this point, just go to Luanda, I guess. There's no one there, so. Um... Move to awesome advisors, that'll make people like us a little bit more, probably, but whatever. Um, GDP growth, middling. Oh, hello. Helicopters versus helicopters. Mormons very high, American businesses. Saturday morning's the time of Jerry, but that, please go ahead. Hey, we got salute Vest Africa. Good job, guys. Good job. Oops. Wrong one. Oops. Should've done the other one. My bad. Ooh. Actually, since we're here. Yeah, look at all this we can build up. Yeah, more cities, baby. Improve that GDP until we build more millies, which will probably never happen, but whatever. Well, you never know. Maybe I will build up more millies. Usually don't. Usually don't need to. Uh, anything down here? No, we are good, good, good. Too bad we can't get... I don't think we can get Hawaii back from the Japanese, which does kind of suck, I'll be honest. Well, whatever. Keep pushing them out. The fall of Leipoldville, and yet the war goes on. Nice. Very good. Um, let's go up this way. Let's go Brazzaville. Find him, kill him. And we go up to Libreville. Lessons to South Africa. Sand and the Advisors. Uh, actually, I don't want to do that. I don't... Eh, yeah, I don't want to do that. No. Forward base Darwin. Australia is the closest ally to the Indonesians. The northern tip of the country is one quite one quite populous city, Darwin. This area could serve as an important launch point for any action taken in the South Pacific. We'll offer to construct vast fortification networks in northern Australia in order to brace for the coming conflict to the shores. These bases will also be excellent points from which to deploy troops to Indonesia. Followed up with... Emergency tra Naval Training. A hidden Hand. Um... Honestly, do we really need to do this? 
Crazy mystical support. You know what? I don't want to do this one yet. That doesn't seem War of words. Do get some more political power. As the Indonesian conflict unfolds, it's critical that we control the conversation surrounding it. While the American everyman might not have much of a reason to care about Indonesia, by framing the situation as a struggle against their Japanese enemy, we might win their hearts and minds. We'll always hit the airwaves and ensure that the world of ours and our own people both know the righteousness of Hatta's crusades and cause. Those to induce our people at home to sympathize with the Indonesian struggle for freedom, as well as assure the free Indonesians that we have their back. And get more political power. Yeah, get, get more political power is probably like my main thing here right now. They're gonna probably encircle us maybe eventually. Go around this way. Point Noir. No, no, no. Point Noir. No. Stop it. Stop asking for peace. I already told you no once. Go up here then. Nice, because all I want to do is kill them and cut them off. So extraction is pretty good too. Our air doctrine is mostly thinking about uh, plane stuff or whatever. War of words, nice. You know how do we stand? The Indonesian war is not a bandit project for the U.S. alone, but a cause for the whole FN can get behind. We can't shoulder the burden of aiding Hatta alone. It's time for the OFN to contribute to the liberation of Indonesia. We'll call on support from the OFN, not volunteers. That's a bridge too far, but we'll secure substantial equipment and donations from our member states. Hatta's men will be armed with new weapons from as far afield as Canada and New Zealand. Let's hopefully, hopefully greatly aid their independent struggle. Other than that, I think we're pretty much done here with this stuff. Uh, another melee would be okay, but I wanted that political power, you know. That PP is too much for me to resist. There you go. There you go. Beutlerstadt. Should be able to just do it freely now, right? Oh, there we are, F. Wow. Alright, so after that one, I'm going to keep the committees in check. Officer from Rome, if you want to go that, please go ahead. Get me the ambassador. That's what I was saving our PP up for. Codify protections. Gain support from two more senators. Ah, uh, codify protections first. Well, there's always been efforts in the past to grant rights and liberties to Ameri African Americans. Lawmakers have time and time again manipulated and creatively interpreted the law to deny them these rights. Our efforts should focus on modifying federal law to legally codify the rights, guarantees, and protections granted to those Americans in a clear, well defined manner. By closing the legal loopholes used to keep them oppressed, we can ensure that racial minorities are granted the fundamental protections needed to bring them on the level of the rest of America. Uh, so 372 is low. Catholic opinion is low about by the Pope. Uh, they don't care about us anymore. Lower relationship with the Mormons. Uh, hmm. Republicans, that's fine to do. No. A loss of opportunity. Well, god dang it. If you're about that, please go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do some funky stuff off screen because I, I sometimes I get sick and tired of how these stupid wars start and go. So I'm going to do some funky stuff off screen and we're going to make sure that Free Indonesia wins as well as we do United We Stand, followed up with, of course, codified protections. Civil rights in Charlotte. Despite the ongoing tension occurring just past the current President Bennett sat behind. The president could still pick up on the whispered voices of the thousands which had gathered to enjoy the speech. Tonight's dinner was watched by all sides. But as North Carolina became a staging ground for a variety of movements, both radical and reactionary, now we welcome President Wallace F. Bennett. Charlotte's mayor booming into the microphone as a round of applause thundered out, adjusting the mic. Bennett spoke good evening to those attending tonight's event, as well as those who may be watching from across the country tonight. As I stand alongside my fellow Democrats to turn yet another page in the world and twists and turns of the history of the U.S. For centuries, many regarded African Americans as common commodities to be used and traded, even igniting a conflict which tore a nation asunder. It seemed as if the air had been sucked out from the hall. Was the president about to defend the segregationists or punch them in the gut? Regretfully, we continue to witness injustices with African Americans suffering low social, political, and economic wrongs at every level of society. While my fellow Democrats and I adhere to tradition and conservatism, this is by no means justification or approval of the prejudices faced by African American citizens today. It is shameful that some continue to stand against the average American based on the color of their skin. The administration will work to the end of these wrongs once and for all. It had to be said. And also, I did use consequences. I got tired of this. I don't care about the civil rights. The civil rights, no. I don't care about civil rights. I don't care about Africa. Uh, but yeah, I don't really care about Africa, so I just get, uh, I basically just won the war and freedom. Oh, the Nomadic Gascar still exists, and they're not looking very good. Same thing with Indonesia, I don't care anymore. I've done it so many times that it just does not interest me anymore, so... Oh, well, I apologize for using Cons commands for that part. It just, it's boring at this point. I've done it so many times. 
I, I don't want to deal with it anymore. But voting station inspections. Voter suppression is a major issue that has been figured by civil rights activists. Minorities are often prevented from voting through a myriad of obscure regulations, a confusing registration process, and a lack of non-English language materials. We should seek and send out inspectors to certain problem areas and make sure everyone is being offered their democratic rights. This should also make us more popular among the civil rights movement without annoying the segregation is too much after all. We're just voice enforcing rights people should already be entitled to. Office from Rome, once again, if you wonder about that, please go right ahead. Give me the ambassador. And keep the committees in check. All but one great push. President Biden wants the civil rights debate settled as soon as possible. He's gathered the lawmakers together for a marathon session that aims to introduce a rapid fire sequence of laws to vote. He has hopes that if we can get the issue dealt with quickly, we can keep it out of the news tackle for a lengthy period, and thus lessen the anger of segregationists might feel towards us if, than if we were to allow the process to drag out. The time for idling is over. Let's get this issue sorted out once and for all. And anything else here? Um, probably not too much, honestly. Yeah. And of course, people don't like us or hate us, so. Yeah, people generally like us too. And Civil Rights Act, how are we looking now? 39 and 6 and 1, so. Yeah, but which means the next time I play is Bennett. If it's before Toolbox 3 comes out, which might be possible, um, I might just go the other route. We'll probably just go the other route. Uh, so we have about 46 senators, which is not bad. Keep the committee in check. Committees in check. Most Americans' experience with the legislation as a process begins and ends at the Oval Office, where the President signs con Congress approved bills into law in front of cameras and key allies, where the memoirs and tabloids ne neglect to mention it, though. <clears throat> uh, perhaps because of the comp comparative lack of glamour, if not scandals, that these laws have to pass through a whole batter of committees and subcommittees before they even see the light of Capitol Hill. Astute observers would make or point out this facet of American lawmaking mind-bogglingly Byzantine nature, but for the Beltway's savvy participants. The tedium this presents is a beloved tool to keep the laws they dislike from ever seeing the light of Capitol Hill. President Ben is aware, of the, is aware of the many ways his opponents can utilize this fearsome bureaucratic bludgeon to undermine the passage of his own Civil Rights Act, and plans to make appeals of support to his fellow Republican Democrats and the appropriate committees. South disenfranchises blacks. In the past couple of weeks, thousands of southern polling stations have shown to have intentionally prevented African Americans from voting, in violation of the 15th Amendment. A formal federal inquiry into the long-standing complaints found literacy tests that were functionally impossible to pass in the widespread use of poll taxes. These tests were disproportionately given to African American voters and had an astronomical failure rate. Consequently, an official investigation into southern voting stations or practices, as well as into what voter verification measures are and are, and are not permitted, has begun to take shape. President Bennett's called the measures diabolical and antithetical to democracy, and the support for anti-civil rights politicians has dropped slightly, but notably. Democracy is non-negotiable? Well, who likes democracy? So yeah, we can get a few more Republicans on board. And maybe a Democrat, too, would be okay. Ah, no, if you want to buy that, please go right ahead. Boom. We'll see what happens. Very low, it's fine, whatever. Heat integration is fine. Very, very good, very, very good. Go ahead and keep cutting down that bet. Thank you very much. Anti-tank is fine as well. It's always good to have a lot of anti-tank. There goes Onega. Goodbye, Onega. And not bad. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just gave up on the wars. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So we stopped doing it. Oh, uh, we got up here. Anything up here? Far right. Tokyo Siren. Well, where's the ambassador? Well, wh when can we do that? Like, I'm trying to keep enough political power, like legit, like fair political power, you know, in reserve just in case. But you never know. So get two more there, that should be nice. One great push. Keep the committees in check. Rally congressional voters. Game three. We should be able to do it. The battle for Italy. Okay, now we can probably do Italy, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we'll do that. By God, we better get Italy. Decreases, popularity decreases just a bit. Panic over votes? Oh boy. Well, it's... President Walls have been in the Republican Democratic Party are now in a slight panic, having realized that the Dixocrats and the allies in Congress are a far larger group than previously expected. Many Southern congressmen, regardless of prior affiliation, seem to be voting as one with the Dixocrats on civil rights issues, as all things currently uh, stand currently, of course. Bennett's civil rights bill will be narrowly defeated in Congress. So, consequently, both the RDs and the uh, House and Senate whips have been working around the clock to bribe, bully, blackmail, and otherwise coerce more conservative elements of the party into voting for Bennett's bill. This situation is particularly worrying, as it is becoming more and more apparent that some compromises may need to be made with the Dixocrats if any civil rights legislation is going to be passed. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. Nice. B uh, better today, tomorrow. Uh, better tomorrow, today. Friends, Americans, and since the Union's inception, our people have set themselves apart. 
and subduing and settling of a continent in our own bridal invention and industry and a free spirit of nature most of all we have set ourselves apart in the pursuit of, un of the inalienable rights of mankind life liberty and the pursuit of happiness today our beloved homeland stands at an impasse we must determine whether our forefathers were truthful in saying that all men are created equal we are one of the most democratic and free nations on the small earth and we must choose whether we will extend those liberties to everyone in our society we are asked whether we will use our wisdom to build a country where progress is the servant of our needs a society in which the old restrictive and oppressive values of the past may make way for the unbridled march of liberty so I I ask you, the people of America, to make the right choice, to continue to let our nation be a beacon of freedom and progress. Let the U.S. be the city upon the hill once more. I ask you, America, to pass a civil rights bill. I ask you to build a better tomorrow today. The crowd was silent for a moment, taking in the president's words before breaking out in furious applause. From this podium, overseeing the masses, Wallace F. Bennett smiled warmly. The public seemed to be on his side. Strong words from President Bennett, who at least right now is in good health. So, what do we want to do? Increase our influence? Decrease the Japanese influence? And decrease Italian influence as best we possibly can. That's going to cost a lot of PP. Rally right, congressional votes. Everyone to resolve the civil rights matter. We must secure the support of Congress to pass the necessary uh, legislation. Thanks to both the charism of President Bennett and the party's balanced position on the matter, it may be possible to rally congressmen from the Republican Senate and the far right all at once. This requires some deals to be cut with various factions and interest groups within Congress to get some more of them or wavering folks on board, but as long as we promise to push a few of our personal causes forward a bit, it shouldn't be too difficult to garner their votes. When we have their support, we'll be ready to do what is necessary for the future of the nation. Which we absolutely need more support. But Dick Scratts refused to compromise. After President Bennett's speech in D.C., in which the publicly requested to meet the Dick Scratt leaders to hammer out a compromise, many expected the Dick Scratts to at least make a show of being cooperative. Unfortunately, it appears that their stubborn nature knows no bounds, as Strom Thurmond, with his voting cocks firmly behind him, have unequivocally refused to meet with the President. No civil rights, said Senator Thurmond. Not today, nor tomorrow, nor in a century. As the country once again holds its breath over the incredible, decisive upcoming vote on that bill, President Bennett has yet to comment on this unfortunate turn of events. Rather than create a more tense situation by berating the Dixocrats, the president seems content to hold his breath and seek greener pastures. Let's hope he can pull it off without him. Well, we'll see. Let's worry about political power. This stuff I'm not too worried about right now. And nothing's really changed here yet. So we should have gotten two more senators with the one that we're keeping the committee in check. Two more senators, and we'll get three more senators, new allies. We'll have five in total, so we should be okay, actually, because this one says we have 46. Oh, one one-on-one -on -one meeting. Moderate the bill to the left. The RD party goes further divided. Some of the senators, senator senators may be persuaded. This will make more progressive support the Civil Rights Act. New allies. Is that Dixocrats can uh, continue to cooperate? President Bennett has been forced to find another, another way to pass the Civil Rights Bill currently. The President and his RD allies are looking for friends among the left and uh, center leading NPP congressmen. In addition, some of the fence sitting Democrats and the RDs are likely candidates for recruitment into Bennett's new voting group. Today, President Bennett and Senator LBJ are meeting with several members of the group, most notably the CNPP's Henry Jackson, attempting to swing them over to the side of the Civil Rights, as of right now, though. These alliances are just beginning to take shape, and whether or not they'll actually be able to pass the bill remains to be seen. With the day Congress votes on the bill growing closer, one wonders if the president will be able to form these alliances in time. Who needs them Dixocrats anyways? Before we vote on anything else, because we're going to not have a lot of political power with this whole Italy thing. Which, who knows, maybe they'll just cheat that too, but, um, yeah. We gotta get Italy in. We gotta get Italy in. We have to. We absolutely just have to. Uh, cut. Spend. Nice. Uh, mountain infantry is nice. There we go. Rally, congressional votes. We'll do the best we can, man. We'll do the best we can. As we get a sip of our coffee here. Alright, so. There are two senators who have pledged to vote for the bill with respect to the party affiliation. So technically, we should have it after we get these three votes, right? So plus three, plus so then it's five. Five plus 46 is 51 out of 100. Or really, 98. Uh, should be good enough, right? An acceptable solution. Well, we'll read that one once we're done with this one. Can we pass civil rights in the first episode? That's my question. It's taken a lot of careful balancing, but we have devised a strategy which might be palatable to both sides of the civil rights issue. We've taken on board a criticism and concerns from both sides of the debate. We may have learned lean slightly one way or the other, but it matters not. The point is we have several bills lined up that should hopefully get most of America on the same page. This includes this range of civil rights legislation that's taken on board with both the desires of the civil rights movement as well as the concerns of the segregationists. We can prove that the art of compromise is key in solving America's issues. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. For liberty and justice. Yeah, decay will, st will stop. Decay until the trees continued. Nice. Yeah. Strength and poor American sentiment. Invest diplomats. High investment. Wow. Holy crap. That was a big old jump. I like it like that, man. Decrease our influence. Decrease their influence. Nice. 
Yeah, it's Supreme Court of Justice. If you want to go that, please go ahead. Let's fill this vacancy, baby. Let's do it. All right. Uh, expand counterintelligence. Nah. We good. Don't rock the boat. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Bubbigan's desire is middling, which is not very good. Uh, 20 political power ain't too bad. Yeah, we should we should be able to get this. Should. Huh. Senate class elections, who are we gonna vote? R and D, baby. You and me, R and D. Um West Coast maybe? Maybe West Coast. Let's do New England first. Well, we'll do something strong. New England, which I've been to like twice. It's a pretty nice place sometimes. Sometimes. I'll be surprised if we actually don't get this, but whatever. The voice of the people. Leave it to the experts. Dangerously lower relationship with the Republicans. If we're going to go to that side, it seems like we should stay on this side. So, uh, we'll probably do the voice of the people. We can argue that about the specifics of what civil rights actually means all day, but nobody understands what that mean better than those directly affected. All across the country, millions of African Americans and other minorities language disenfranchised from, from the political system. Many of them simply do not bother to engage in politics as a result. If we reunite America, we should reach out to the communities and get them directly involved in both local and national politics. We can make their voice heard and allow them to join the conversation eventually. <laughs> eventually. Ah, uh, keep campaigning. You know what? Just in case, let's save for a good old time. I might just delete our army too. We'll see what happens. Cool. Because they do want some more. Oh, we'll strengthen pro American sentiment eventually. Well, uh, is moderately conservative. Oh, very cool, very cool. Uh, we're going to go with the conservative one for now. And then comprehensive civil rights bill passed. Look at that. Today, in a surprising announcement, the President Bennett's liberal court, or liberal court, liberal civil rights bill has been passed with a possibility, possibly the most significant legal protection for non whites since the passing of the 15th Amendment in 1870. It includes comprehensive protections for voting rights, forbidding state mandated literacy tests targeted at African Americans. It also includes timetables for the total desegregation of American society, demanding that all Jim Crow laws and other race based legislation be repealed within four months. Most importantly, however, it forbids the discrimination of employment on the race, color, religion, and national origin. Darn. Many are surprised that such an all-encompassing liberal civil rights bill was even passed in the first place. In the weeks leading up to the voting on the bill, there was quite a scramble for the, and the RDs, as President Ben and his allies struggled to gather the votes. In the end, however, it appears that the president was able to get the bill passed with no comp compromise on the rights and freedoms of minorities. Impressive. Uh, what's this going to do for our election, though? Salvation and darnation. The church pews in Salt Lake City were filling for the Sunday service by the assembled congregation could talk of little except the president. The Civil Rights Act, of course, and a progressive one at that, had passed that in Washington, except for the, except that the word from the leadership had seen, had been that Brother Bennett would stand with the moral majority. And now that the bill has been passed, what with jubilation in the North and teeth gnashing in the South, how would the West react? A congregant turned sadly to his neighbor. I can't believe the president would ignore the quorum of the Twelve Apostles and go forward with the bill. It would seem like such a good guy. Maybe he likes the blacks more than God, came the dismissive reply. How can else can you be claimed to be a man of faith if you don't listen to the elders of the church? The congregation quieted as Elder Thomas Monson took the pulpit. A stormy look on his face. I asked that a congregation in these trying times for our nation look inwards into themselves to find strength and to pray for the soul of Brother Bennett, who has strayed from the path of the faithful. Does my soul look like it needs saving? Yes, it does. It's low. Oh, boy. We don't like it when the Mormons don't like us. Voices of the people. Uh, oh, judicial shakeup. Um, you worry about that? Please go ahead. What do you mean? Well, maybe it was a liberal one that died. Whatever. Take the floor. Whatever. RDs, listen to their stories. While taking this focus, our relationship with the dicks will decay quicker. Ah, eh, whatever. Listen to their stories. It's a sad reality when the segregationists view African Americans as less than people, a concept they have been taught all their lives. While it's unlikely that we could convince the most staunch racists of the errors of their ways, we can certainly change the minds of some of the more moderate people. We should encourage the civil rights supporters, especially the African Americans themselves, to speak up about their experiences and how segregation has affected them. By giving them a voice to speak directly to the segregationists, we might be able to change some of their minds and get the most people on board with the reforms we need. Uh, well, Italy chose to be to leave us. Okay, then. Oh, isn't that just looking great? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I might force them to stay with us. You know, you never know. At this point, okay, so the talent's recording. This is my last American president I've not played, I think, yet. Um, that I really tried. So, playing as. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. A whip of popery. Mr. President, you're going to want to see this. An aide, at an AIDS panic call, Bennett marched into the chief of staff's office, irritated that his evening readings had been interrupted. 
The White House staff asked President Ford among them what was huddled around the TV showing Michael Harrington being interviewed by CBS. Why didn't you tell me you were talking with Mo Thomas Monson, Mr. President? Ford whispered. Bennett froze as Harrington launched into his tirade. Anyone who pursued a career in politics or took civics classes as a kid knows the separation of church and state is sacrosanct. Heck, every Kennedy has had to dodge accusations of being a puppet of the Rome, and I'm no different, even if I'm a lapsed Catholic. Carrington stabbed his pencil in the camera. So why does that Mormon church in Salt Lake City have a direct line to the president of the U.S.? I'd be embarrassing if it weren't such a downright danger, especially given Elder Monson's words about the recent civil rights acts. Four pulled Bennett aside. I'm not going to question your right to talk to your priest, but I need you to be straight with me now. Did Thomas Monson influence your decision on the civil rights act, and should we say anything about it? Yeah, well, what's the big deal? We talk to our priests. What? Like, just talking to them doesn't do much. I told Monson no. Uh. Yeah, it doesn't have the full story. God dang it, Harrington. What are you doing? What are you doing to us, son? Listen to their stories. Real change? Since we're going this way, symbol of peace? Symbols of progress? <laughs> We're going to go radical here. A few days after Harrington's interview with Walter Cronkite, President Bennett stepped out of the White House where a waiting throng of journalists flitched for comments. Mr. President, regarding Mr. Harrington's statement earlier this week, is it true that you've been speaking with the elders of the Mormon Church about policy? On the question whether I've been in con contact with Mr. Monson, yes, I have. Bennett's frank admi admission. Still in the crowd into silence, but no, if you're wondering whether Mr. Monson had been an undue influence on the policies of my administration, he has not. But what about Civil Rights Act? A reporter, having recovered from the initial shock, blurted out the obvious question. <clears throat> Bennett shrugged. Well, have you actually read the text? There are many points on which Mr. Monson and I disagree. Mr. Monson's opinions are well known, but we don't see eye to eye on everything just because we share the same faith. Bennett chuckled as the reporter's pen scribbled fiercely. I don't know where Mr. Harrington got the idea that a man's faith is his policy, but it's a remarkably sloppy one. You come with the king, you best not miss. Is that bot two threats? Um, I'm going to decrease Japanese independence, or uh, Italian independence. That might help us out. That's as much as we're going to do for now, because we're, we're dangerously low on PP, so... Okay, we got more PP. Let's spend some more PP. Uh, there you go. Should make us feel better. If not, might use the cons commands. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But this coffee's pretty good too. Pretty darn good. The perfidious fins escape justice once again. Nice. Keep counting down. Polls are updated. God, I hope we don't lose too many support here. Not too much support, at least. Alright, so beer and Black League. Anything else around here? As long as we keep... Well, technically, we're for the Democrats, but... As long as we keep doing okay. Because right now, we're at 46 Republicans, which is quite a bit. 22 Dems. Voice of the people? Voices of the people. Listen to them stories. Oh, they're going to get a campaign. Good for them. Take the floor. With a policy direction mostly decided upon, it's a time for us to convince the party to support our policy. Whether, while we are unlikely to change the minds of those staunch against us, we can still win over those wavering in the middle who remain ambivalent. By taking the lead in the debates on the Senate floor, we can gain the necessary support we need to see our course through to its conclusion. All we need to do is talk to get people on our side and talk to them. A conquest and daylight savings sounds like you're about that. Please go right ahead. Spring forward and fall back. Italy chooses there's a future. Do you want me to choose this one? If not, I'm just going to go back and give myself political power, because I'm not going to waste political power with Italian, so yeah. Because we're already here. That's it. It's going to happen again, but screw it. We'll do it again. Why not? Uh, boost cut. High investment. We'll see what happens. It's all balanced in action. It's kind of weird, I'll be honest. Very weird. 152 billion ain't enough. I know I should probably really focus on the economy and stuff first, but whatever. Um, let's ghost. Yeah, we can always lower raise and lower support later on. Um, there we go. There you go. They better join us. I swear, man. I swear, and I don't want to swear very much. But if we have to swear, I don't mind if I have to. But listen to their stories, take the floor, of course. Um, yeah, I'll probably do real change, really. The rate at which our Republican support decays will slow down. You don't worry about that, please go ahead. Though the Democrats are traditionally part of conservative values, President Bennett and many senior members of the party have been swayed by the arguments of the civil rights movement. We can no longer beat around the bush. In this case, America needs progress if we truly want to be a government for all Americans. While we only take things as far as some of the other parties are suggesting, we'll provide some real reform that will guarantee the political rights of African Americans nationwide. Segregations will not be happy, but we can no longer deny that the current system is unfair and deeply flawed. Cool. And empower the Republicans? Excellent campaign. Awesome. 
Yeah, well, Muslim power the Republicans too, because why not? Well, our turns tur towards more liberal politics has greatly pleased our Republican partners, who are glad we have managed to bring forward progress on the civil rights issue without burning down the country. Our change in direction has confused and outraged some people, however, with many w questioning why the Democratic half, the RDZ, are even necessary, and both factions are following the same line of thinking. While well, this may be damaging for us, President Bennett believes that in this case, we must support support behind the policies of the Republican Party to make the system work for all Americans. A touch of hyperbole. President Wallace F. Bennett sat in the Oval Office, looking out upon the White House on his exceptionally nice day. And not just for the view, today another blow would be delivered to the Dixiecrats. In the past week, stories of police brutality on protesting African Americans have been modified to a slight degree. These stories were then published in official RD media, including a particularly sad story a few hours ago, the killing of a black teenager during a race ride in Charleston. The story was slightly altered such that the teen was simply trying to get through the crowd. In actual fact, the police report claimed to have assaulted a police officer. It was just a touch of hyperbole. Ah, I love media misinformation. It makes me feel so much more trustworthy towards him. A knock came at the door. Come in, Mr. The President said. A thin, tall, thin man in a dark suit walked in holding a notebook. Ah, James, Bennett said warmly. What can I do for you? Well, it's about the recent stories you and your party have been propagating. Bennett shrugged. What about them? They're false. Objectively so. So. Objectively so. So. Sooner or later. News about these falsifications will get out and might actually hurt us in the long run. No, it won't. If it doesn't... If it does happen to come out that they're false, it won't matter. It's all politics, Jimmy. Everyone exaggerates here, there. And what if you're wrong, Mr. President? Well, let's not be wrong, then. Let's not be wrong. Oh, the President's man blow the lids off the box office. If you want to bid that, please go right ahead. And we win the issue. Nay. Can we get Italy in with us? Come on. Join the party, Italy. Join the party. Trans-oceanic stuff, huh? Uh, increase our influence. And we're out of peepee. -pee. Alrighty. Not bad, not bad. Is it toast? I mean, obviously, I could have spent, we could have spent more on, like, construction and stuff, because we have so many cities to build, but it'll come eventually. I'm not really too worried about that, so. I only get 1.1 a day, which is real sucky. Raise the relationship with the Republicans. The rate at which our Dixocrats support the case will accelerate. Republicans become more popular. Give me liberty or give me death. Give me government intervention. That's what you're saying. Give me government intervention. But yeah, that's not too bad. That's okay. And Yunnan's gone. Not bad. Pretty good. Incredible campaign. Oh, that's not good for us. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And right there, actually. Suppress the center. I don't know why not. We can we do it because we can. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because we can. Uh, Rockies, maybe. Let's go Great Plains again. Oh, we did Great Plains. Balls oh, okay. are updated, my friends. It goes to the Dutch state. And that's a lot of lag. That is a lot of lag. What is going on? Is it Omps got one? No? Republicans will still like us a lot, which is fine. Uh, what's the political landscape like? Our are working together well. MPP is willing to put aside their differences. Not bad, not bad. Real change. Power Republicans, because he can. Take the floor, which we'll do eventually. A fine line, huh? Now, nah, perfectly broken system. Now we go through fellowship unity. Japan. What do you mean Japan wins the issue? Come on. So This is... I hate this stupid thing. This is so stupid. How do they win the issue when we invest so much, man? Meh. Just win it for us. Oh, look at that. Oh, you got a civvies. Look at that. That's very nice. Uh, Voting Rights Act. Attempt to pass a bill. Dangerous lower relationship with Dixcrats. LBJ, Senate leader for the Republicans, has taken the floor with the support of various figures from his party faction to propose the Voting Rights Act. This act would go a step further the protections that we have implemented thus far and guarantee the political and voting rights of African Americans and other minorities on the federal level. With progressive values beginning to win out across both the Republicans and Democrats, it would make little sense to oppose this new bill, which would cement our support with the civil rights movement. However, many within the party fear this would be seen as a grave transgression by the segregationists, and they would likely lose a lot of support in the South for allowing this to go through. Well, we already don't have their support, so it doesn't even matter. Does it? No, it does not. Italy joins the free world, thank God. Another shining light in the Sea of Darkness. We spent all that PP now that we can't spend anywhere else. God dang it. Oh well. Here, we'll build a we'll build a little circle of forts. There you go. That's how we're gonna spend our construction money. Which means in the future we're gonna have to uh let me get a nice little blue cancer blob here. There you go. Should feel good about that. Hey, join the whole fan that free world just got a little bit bigger? Oh you bet it did. Not bad. 
Not bad at all. Little to X. If someone does and show mercy to people, Allah does not show mercy to them. These wise words of Prophet Muhammad, be peace be upon him, were the last comfort of Malcolm X, the final threads of rope he firmly grasped, did not fall off the cliff. Whenever he watched Klansmen march through the streets, whenever he drove through the neglected streets of the Bronx, whenever he watched that empty suit known as Martin Luther King spout empty platitudes and about forgiveness and love, he felt like he was going to snap. Reciting that mantra in his head dozens, d hundreds of times, sort of dampened the seething hot rage deep within him, but he didn't fully extinguish it. It merely funneled it into productive thoughts, a fervent drive that turned him into one of America's biggest civil rights advocates through nothing but his own labor. However, the comfortable knowledge of the fact that the eternal oppressors would get their just desserts in Jan. Jahannam was enough for Malcolm. He had no patience for the afterlife. He longed for racial justice in this world instead of the afterlife. And he dedicated his entire life to this cause, going as far to change his surname to highlight the systematic destruction of West African culture waged by the institutions of slavery. No actions were too radical, no words were too dangerous when it came to dismantling the century old white supremacy that defined the U.S. since their inception. Malcolm X made lots of enemies over the years. Millions of people wanted him gone, and he already came to terms with the fact that his death will likely not be a natural one. What good is an activist if his actions don't challenge firmly entrenched powers? No, his mission never ends. As long as the proverbial knife sticks in the back of the black man, Malcolm would fight on no matter how. The eternal struggle. But I think that's going to conclude today's episode, my friends. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And let me know whenever I play as Bennett again someday. What, should we go the opposite route and get, don't rock the boat? Regardless, thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.